Welcome to ForeFlight Power Users. My name is Ryan McBride. I lead the product design team at ForeFlight. In this course, we're going to walk through route planning on both the Maps tab as well as the Flights tab. I'm also going to show you some of the unique weather features that are available in ForeFlight. I'm going to give you some in-route tips for making flying with ForeFlight easier and safer. And finally, we'll walk through post-flighting and debriefing with ForeFlight. If you're new to ForeFlight, be sure to check out our fundamentals course at foreflight.com slash videos. The first area we'll focus on today is route planning on the Maps tab. When viewing the Maps tab, we plan routes using the Flight Plan drawer, which is accessible via the FPL button at the top of the screen. We can enter routes just like typing words in a sentence. For example, I could type KRNO for Reno, then the space bar, then KSFO for San Francisco, and the space bar and ForeFlight plots out a route from Reno to San Francisco. In order to get good numbers out of ForeFlight, we have to put good numbers into ForeFlight, and we do that by using the three buttons along the left-hand side of the screen. The first is the Aircraft button. When I tap on the Aircraft button, ForeFlight provides me a list of all the aircraft that I've previously added to the system. To create a new aircraft, I tap the plus button in the top right-hand corner of the menu, and ForeFlight provides me an empty form. It's important to fill out the tail number, as that's how ForeFlight identifies your aircraft in the system. It's also useful to fill out the aircraft type, because ForeFlight can automatically fill out other parts of the form for you if it knows the type of aircraft you're flying. The type of aircraft is also important for ForeFlight to know in order to recommend performance profiles for Performance Plus customers. Once you've selected your aircraft, you then need to tell ForeFlight about the performance characteristics that you plan to fly with. There are a variety of different types of performance profiles in ForeFlight Mobile. The most basic performance profile is available to all customers. It's user customizable, and it allows users to define airspeeds, fuel burn rates, and climb rates for climb, cruise, and descent phases of flight. To create a basic profile, we tap the Profile button, and in the Profile Selection menu, under Custom Performance Profiles, we can tap Add Custom Performance Profile. Once you've filled out your climb, cruise, and descent performance characteristics, ForeFlight saves this custom profile, and you can then select it for future flights. Performance Plus customers have access to two new types of performance profiles, bi-altitude profiles and ForeFlight profiles. Bi-altitude profiles are similar to basic profiles in that they allow you to define climb, cruise, and descent performance characteristics, but crucially, they allow you to define these characteristics for any altitude. This is important, as aircraft performance varies greatly based on altitude. Bi-altitude profiles can be added through ForeFlight.com. Simply log into ForeFlight.com with your email and password, navigate to the Aircraft section, select the aircraft you wish to modify, and then create a new bi-altitude profile. You can define your aircraft's performance at any altitude, as many altitude levels as you want, or just a few, and ForeFlight will interpolate between the altitudes when calculating performance numbers. Bi altitude profiles that you create online will sync automatically to your iPad, so you can select them under the Custom Performance Profile section. Finally, Performance Plus customers also have access to ForeFlight Performance Profiles. ForeFlight Profiles define climb, cruise, and descent characteristics at any altitude for any temperature deviation for any weight change. These are the most accurate performance profiles to use. ForeFlight Performance Plus customers can access ForeFlight Performance Profiles for any given aircraft as long as they've entered the type code for that aircraft under the Profile Selection view. ForeFlight Performance Profiles are not editable in the same way as Custom Performance Profiles, but you can bias speed and fuel flow by tapping the View button, tapping into the cell, and then adjusting cruise speed and fuel flow by a percentage. For instance, if after a few flights, my aircraft was burning 3% less fuel than ForeFlight predicted, I could modify the fuel flow adjustment by 3% to better match my aircraft's performance characteristics. Another useful tool on the flight plan drawer is the Route Advisor. You can access the Route Advisor by tapping the Routes button on the right-hand side of the view. The Route Advisor shows ATC cleared routes, preferred routes, and airway routes between your departure and destination. You'll notice the performance numbers these are the actual calculated fuel burn, time, and distance calculations based on winds aloft and your aircraft's performance characteristics. You'll notice at the top of the view the Aviation Cloud Auto Route. This is a new option available to Performance Plus customers. The Aviation Cloud Auto Route is the most time and fuel efficient route between departure and destination. Aviation Cloud Auto Routes factor in 
wind and temperature aloft forecasts, and your aircraft's performance characteristics to generate one optimum route. So what does an optimum route look like? In this case, I have a cross-country route from Los Angeles to New York. This is a flight that was recently flown by a jet aircraft. This is the Aviation Cloud auto route at the same time for the same aircraft for the same departure and destination. So why the huge difference in route? Well, at this time, at the optimum cruise altitude for this aircraft, 39,000 feet, ForeFlight determined that it was much more time and fuel efficient to go up north to catch the tailwinds riding into New York. If you're happy with one of the proposed routes in the Route Advisor, select it, and then tap Select Route at the bottom of the view, and the route will be automatically populated into your flight plan drawer. Another useful tool on the flight plan drawer is the Altitude Advisor. You can access Altitude Advisor by tapping on the Altitude at the bottom left-hand corner of the view. Altitude Advisor looks at the route that's entered and gives you your total headwind or tailwind components at every altitude all along your route. The time and fuel burn estimates are based on your aircraft's estimated performance characteristics if you were to fly at this altitude. Once you've entered your aircraft, its performance characteristics, and altitude and selected a route, the distance, time and route, estimated time of arrival, total fuel burn, and total headwind or tailwind component averaged along the entire route is located at the bottom of the view. Another useful tool in the ForeFlight flight plan drawer is the Procedure Advisor. Procedure Advisor is a useful tool for selecting a departure, an arrival, or an approach into and out of any airport. To access Procedure Advisor, simply tap the Procedure button in the top right-hand corner of the flight plan drawer. ForeFlight allows me to select a departure, an arrival, or an approach into and out of any airport on my route. I can, for example, select an arrival into O'Hare, and ForeFlight asks me to choose the arrival that I wish to fly. The map is fully interactive. I can zoom in, and I can see all of the transitions for each arrival grouped by color. I'll select the MADI 3 arrival, and then I'll select the Green Bay transition. Finally, ForeFlight asks me what runway I intend to land on. I'll select 27 right. Here's a preview of what that arrival would look like if I were to fly that transition and land on that runway. I'll add it to my route. When I go back to the map, you can see all of the waypoints for my arrival have been added on top of my map. I've also added the MADI 3 Jeppesen arrival on top of my main base map. I can do the same thing for approaches. I'll go back into the flight plan drawer, select the procedure advisor again, but this time select Approach into O'Hare. I'll select the 27 right RNAV approach. ForeFlight gives me a preview of what this approach looks like, including the plate itself. All of the intermediate fixes are added to the map. If I'm happy with it, I can add it to my route. When I go back to the map, all of those intermediate fixes have been added, and ForeFlight has even replaced my arrival with my approach plate. Terrain Profile is accessible under the Flight Plan drawer, under the Profile tab. When in flight, Terrain Profile operates in flight mode and shows you terrain and obstacles ahead of your aircraft. You can press and hold on the Terrain Profile to locate a specific obstacle or terrain ahead of your aircraft. Notice the red dot on the terrain profile. You have a linked red dot on the map, and you can zoom in and see exactly where that feature exists ahead of your aircraft. The other mode is route mode. When you select the route option in the top right-hand corner, terrain profile shows you terrain and obstacles along your entire route. You can move the slider to see what altitude you'll need to be at to make it across the highest obstacle or terrain on your route. Similarly, you can zoom in to any given area and press and hold anywhere to see terrain or obstacles on the map. There's a third useful mode that Terrain Profile works in, and it's Ruler Mode. You can take two fingers, place them on the map, and ForeFlight Terrain Profile will render out any of the terrain or obstacles in between your two fingers. Notice in this case the Terrain Profile constantly re-rendering. This is a great way to see obstacles or terrain off route. Let's take a look at some of the route planning features on the Flights tab. The Flights tab features many of the same fields that are available on the Flight Plan drawer on the Maps tab with some key differences. For instance, you can define a departure and a destination, but you can also define an alternate. Once you've defined an alternate, ForeFlight will factor that alternate into its calculations for time and fuel burn. 
Similarly, you can enter an aircraft and define its performance characteristics via the Performance Profile field. The Route field is also available, as well as the Route Advisor tool. For Performance Plus customers, you can also enter a payload with a number of people, average weight per person, and cargo. There's also a new fuel section that includes a fuel policy selection. There are five types of fuel policies in ForeFlight Mobile. Minimum fuel required is the minimum legal required amount of fuel, which includes your trip fuel, your taxi fuel, and your reserve fuel. Fuel for the alternate is included if you've defined one. Extra fuel is the fuel in addition to the minimum fuel required that you want to have on board. Maximum fuel fuels your aircraft all the way up to its maximum limits. Landing fuel is a user-defined amount of fuel that you wish to have when you land. So landing fuel will tell you how much fuel you need to put in the tanks when you depart to have the amount you want when you land. Manual fuel allows you to define any fuel amount at engine start. The last section in the flight's form is the weight verification section. Here ForeFlight will tell you if your aircraft is over or under any specific weights. Once you're happy with your plan, you can file the flight plan by tapping Proceed to File. ForeFlight will copy all of your route information into an ICAO flight plan form. You can always modify this information before you file, or if you're happy with it, simply tap the File button and off it goes. You'll notice at the top of the screen a readout of overview performance information for each flight. This is laid out similarly to the overview information on the flight plan drawer on the Maps tab. Distance, time and route, estimated time of arrival, flight fuel, and headwind or tailwind component averaged across the entire route. There's a few additional tools available on the Flights tab that are not available on the Maps tab. The Navlog is one such example. After you've entered your route, aircraft, time of departure, you can open up the Navlog tab, and ForeFlight will generate a full screen Navlog that includes overview information about your flight, per leg information, and performance aloft information. At the bottom of the Navlog is a summary of all of the times, fuels and weights, and an area to take notes. It's worth noting that if you've planned a flight on the Flights tab and are now ready to go fly, you can very quickly send this flight to the map by tapping the Send To button in the top right-hand corner of the screen and selecting Map. ForeFlight will copy all of your route information over to the Maps tab and fill it into the flight plan drawer for you automatically. Similarly, if you've planned a flight on the Maps tab and wish to generate a nav log, a weather briefing, or a flight plan, tap the Send To menu, select Flights, and ForeFlight will copy this information into a new flight on the Flights tab. It's worth noting, many of the features that we just reviewed are also available on ForeFlight.com. You can log into ForeFlight.com, plan flights, get weather briefings, generate nav logs, file flight plans, all through your home web browser. And everything you plan on ForeFlight.com syncs to your iPad and iPhone automatically. Let's take a look at some of the weather features available in ForeFlight Mobile. I mentioned just a minute ago that you can access weather briefings on the Flights tab. In order to do this, navigate to the flight you're interested in getting a weather briefing for and select the Briefing option. The ForeFlight briefing is a standard briefing like you'd expect to find on 1-800-WeatherBrief.com, but it's been organized and each weather product has been visualized. For more information on ForeFlight graphical briefing, check out our video at ForeFlight.com slash videos. Another useful weather feature on the Flights tab is the Adverse Condition Alerts. Weather conditions can change rapidly. If there's any weather conditions that have changed between the time that you filed the flight plan and the time you expect to fly, ForeFlight will automatically push you an adverse condition alert. Adverse conditions show up under the Messages section on the Flights tab. Opening up the Messages tab shows you a list of all the adverse conditions that have happened since the time you briefed and before the time you expect to depart. There are a variety of useful text weather products in ForeFlight Mobile as well. Under the Weather section, you're probably familiar with the METAR and the Terminal Forecast. MOS stands for Model Output Statistics. MOS is a forecast product, and it's derived from the output of weather prediction models developed and run by research meteorologists at the NOAA. It's a product that's actually been around for decades, but only recently has been introduced for aviation use. MOS converts NOAA model data into weather elements that are basic to aviation, such as sky cover, ceiling height, visibility, wind speed and direction, probability of precipitation, and even precipitation type. Forecasters also rely on MOS as one form of guidance to construct and amend a terminal forecast. There are four main benefits to MOS. Terminal forecasts provide the forecast for over 600 airports throughout the U.S. However, MOS is available at over 2,100 airports throughout the U.S. and its territories, out to three days in the future. MOS is updated hourly. 
you'll get a refreshed MOS forecast at an airport every hour. Furthermore, MOS is highly tailored for each airport, so if the airport is in a valley or near an ocean or next to a river, the MOS forecast is aware of these features and how they have local effects on the weather for that airport. Unlike the terminal forecast, however, the MOS cannot forecast multiple cloud layers. It also cannot forecast showers or fog in the vicinity of the airport, nor can it forecast precipitation intensity or low-level wind shear. Underneath the MOS option is the forecast discussion. I like to think of the forecast discussion as the meteorologist's blog post on what's going on in the area. Meteorologists are required to write a forecast discussion to explain their latest issued forecast. Fortunately for pilots, there's an aviation section, and ForeFlight scrolls to the aviation section of the forecast discussion automatically. Next up, radar. There are a variety of different radar features available in ForeFlight Mobile. When you're on the maps view, you'll see two radar options at the top of the screen, composite radar and lowest tilt radar. What's the difference? Well, when an XRAD station sends a beam out, it actually sends a beam out from roughly 0.5 degrees up to 19.5 degrees. This angle may vary based on each individual NEXRAD station, but most NEXRAD stations are generally tuned for these angles of elevation. The lowest angle is called lowest tilt. Therefore, when we refer to lowest tilt reflectivity, we're referring to reflectivity that was returned when the NEXRAD station sent a beam out at its lowest angle. Composite refers to the worst case reflectivity that was returned across all angles of elevation when the NEXRAD station swept the sky. So why have two options, lowest tilt and composite? Well, when we're looking at reflectivity above any given area, in this case, let's say, an airport, it might be useful to look at lowest tilt to see precipitation that's likely hitting the ground. When we're flying, however, we want to see the worst case scenario above any given area, and therefore it's useful to look at composite, because composite shows us the absolute worst reflectivity above any point on the Earth. Here is an example of composite reflectivity versus lowest tilt reflectivity. Composite is on the left, lowest tilt is on the right you can see there's quite a bit of precipitation in the atmosphere that's not hitting the ground. and We can see that by all the green on the outside of this storm system. This reflectivity is not picked up on the lowest tilt radar, but because the composite radar sweeps the sky at multiple angles of elevation, it is picked up. For customers who would like their onboard radar systems to match the coloring of the radar they see on ForeFlight Mobile, under the settings menu on the map page, four color radar is now an option. When four color radar is enabled, ForeFlight re-renders this beautiful radar representation into an alternative four-color representation. This way, the colors on your onboard radar will match closely to what you see on ForeFlight Mobile. Let's talk about some of the tools that are available to you in ForeFlight Mobile while flying in route. Specifically, on the plates view, ForeFlight has a feature called FBOs on plates. When you're looking at a plate in full screen, there's an FBO button in the top left-hand corner of the screen. When you toggle this on, ForeFlight renders FBOs on airport diagrams where they're actually located on the field. You can then tap on any FBO to see information about it, fuel prices, any photos, and any comments that other ForeFlight customers have left. Another useful feature when looking at a procedure is inversion. For example, on this arrival, I can select the Settings menu, select Invert Plate Colors, and ForeFlight automatically inverts the color of the plate. This works for any type of procedure. This way, I can preserve my night vision when flying at night with ForeFlight. It's worth noting that this inverted preference is retained if I were to send a geo-referenced procedure to the map. For example, I can tap the Send To menu, select Send To Map, and when I send a geo-referenced procedure to the map, if I've inverted that procedure, that inversion is preserved. In this instance, if I was flying at night, I might want to change my map theme to dark. I can easily do this by selecting the Settings menu on the Map tab, select map theme, tap into the menu, and select dark. Now I have a dark map theme and a dark procedure overlaid on top. I can also invert any chart. When I'm on the map view, if I select, for example, an IFR low chart, I now have a dark procedure overlaid on top of a bright chart. If I'd prefer the chart to be dark, I can select the settings menu, select invert chart colors, and now both my procedure as well as my IFR chart are dark. Similarly to the inversion preference, when I make annotations on a plate, those annotations are transferred to the map as well. When viewing a plate on the map, tapping on the plate presents a menu. I can quickly change my plate to a different procedure by selecting another procedure out of the menu. If I select View Full Screen, 
Forflight brings me back to the plates view and loads this procedure in full screen. If I were to annotate the procedure from here using the pencil tool, for example, highlighting this specific altitude restriction on this procedure, and then send this procedure back to the map, my annotations are preserved. It's great to have dark procedures and dark charts for preserving night vision when flying with Forflight after dark. But what about the rest of the app? For example, here's the airport's view by default. Well, we can change the rest of the app to be dark by choosing the dark app theme. We do this under the More tab under Settings. At the top of the Settings view is an app theme option. Tapping into the menu allows us to select dark. When we select dark, the entire app is re-rendered in a dark theme. Going back to the airport view reveals a much darker look. So I can now switch easily between different views and maintain my night vision. Everything in ForeFlight Mobile is interactive, and this includes the route bubbles in the flight plan drawer. When looking at a flight plan on the maps view, tapping on a bubble reveals a variety of options. Show on map will center this waypoint on the screen. Direct to will plot a route directly from your current GPS position to that aircraft. Show on map will center this waypoint on the screen. You can insert waypoints before or after, show a procedure, show the airport diagram for this airport, Show full screen will take you over to the airport's view and display the San Francisco airport information automatically. Or you can even change the arrival. For example, I could say select arrival, select a different arrival from the list, and ForeFlight will re-render out the new arrival on the map. Similarly, the navlog section of the flight plan drawer is interactive as well. We call these navlog actions. When on the navlog view, select the arrow, and you're presented with a menu. This allows you to fly direct to a waypoint or activate the leg. For example, if I was to select the direct option, ForeFlight now plots a route from my aircraft to that waypoint. There are a variety of other tools available for making the en route phase of flight with ForeFlight more efficient. You can access these tools under the settings menu under map overlays. Today we're going to talk about these four, extended center lines, distance rings, glide advisor, and track vector. We'll start with extended center lines. When extended center lines are toggled on, any airports in your route will be given extended center lines extending from all of the runways at the airport. This is especially useful when acquainting yourself with an unfamiliar airport's runway orientation. The next option is distance rings. You can enable distance rings directly beneath extended center lines. Distance rings are circles plotted out around your aircraft GPS position. By default, the range of these rings changes based on the zoom level. For example, if I were to zoom out a little bit, my rings are now 5, 10, and 25 nautical miles. Zooming out further, the rings automatically change to 10, 20, and 50 nautical miles. Even further, 15, 30, 75, and finally 400, 800, and 2000. But I can change this behavior. Under the More tab, under the Settings section, I can select Distance Ring Style, and I can switch between Automatic, which is the default behavior, or only show 5, 10, 25, 10, 20, 50, 20, 40, 100, or switch to Time, for example, I could show 5, 10, and 30 minute circles, or 10, 20, and 60 minute circles. Setting your distance ring style to a minutes option is a great way to estimate time out from a waypoint or airport. The next en route tool is Glide Advisor. Glide Advisor can be enabled directly underneath the distance rings option. When Glide Advisor is enabled, ForeFlight factors in a global terrain database, the current winds aloft forecast, your aircraft's glide performance, as well as your current GPS altitude, to accurately plot out a gliding distance in the event of an engine out situation. It's vitally important to fill out your aircraft's glide performance prior to using Glide Advisor. You can do this under the More tab under the Aircraft section, Glide Performance. Enter the best glide speed and ratio for your aircraft. You can find this information in the aircraft's POH. Once you've entered your glide performance information for the aircraft, as long as you've selected that aircraft in the flight plan drawer, enabling Glide Advisor will plot out a realistic glide range based on your current conditions. Another useful feature is Track Vector. You can enable Track Vector directly underneath Glide Advisor in the map settings popover. Based on your aircraft's GPS ground track, ForeFlight will plot out a track vector. In this case, you can see we're turning to the right and then back to the left. You can customize the length of this track vector under the More tab under Settings. Track Vector Length. Track Vector can be shown in seconds, minutes, or even miles. ForeFlight has a variety of unique, useful alerts. You can customize the types of alerts and how they are presented under the More tab, under the Settings section, Alerts. 
you can turn on and off all the different types of alerts that ForeFlight features. In addition, ForeFlight can speak these alerts directly from the iPad speaker or into a Bluetooth-connected headset. You can disable the audio portion of the alerts by disabling Speak All Alerts at the top of the Alerts view. A few examples of alerts built into ForeFlight are the Destination Weather Frequency Callout, the Sync Rate Callout, the 500 AGL Callout, the Approaching Runway Callout, the Entered Runway Callout with Distance Remaining, the TFR Callout, and the Inside TFR Callout. ForeFlight alerts are meant to keep you informed and aware. For example, the Destination Weather Frequency Callout will automatically give you the ATIS frequency as you approach your destination airport. The sync rate alert is automatically displayed if your aircraft sync rate approaches excessive levels. The 500 AGL callout will automatically give you an audio and visual alert when descending beneath 500 feet AGL. When taxiing, ForeFlight can tell you what runway you're approaching, when you've entered that runway, and even how much distance is remaining on that runway. ForeFlight can also tell you when you're approaching a TFR and when you've entered that TFR. With ForeFlight Mobile, post-flighting and debriefing a flight are easier than ever. ForeFlight's track log functionality automatically records your GPS position and altitude so that you can replay flights in 3D later. By default, ForeFlight automatically detects when you take off and when you land, and will record your flights for you without you having to do a thing. However, if you prefer to manually start and stop your flight recordings, you can do so using the record button at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. When the record button is blue and the timer is ticking, you know the track log is currently recording your GPS position and altitude. Once you've landed, you can review your track log under the More tab, Track Log section. Tap into a track log to view information about it, including distance, total time, average ground speed. If you install Google Earth on your iPad, which is a free app available on the App Store, you can even open up this track log and review it in 3D. Do this by going to the Send To menu, selecting Open KML In, and, assuming you have Google Earth on your iPad, select the Google Earth option. ForeFlight will automatically load your track log into Google Earth so you can review it in 3D. ForeFlight also includes a logbook, which automatically logs flights for you. Logbook is under the More tab, Logbook. Because ForeFlight automatically records your flights for you, ForeFlight Logbook will automatically suggest logging flights that you've recently flown. You can see these under the Drafts and Requests section in the Logbook view. Select a draft from ForeFlight Track Log, tap into it, review the information, modify it if you wish, and then delete it or approve it to add it to your logbook. From pre-flight to post-flight, we've designed all of the features in ForeFlight Mobile to make your life as a pilot easier and safer. I hope you found this course educational. For a basic walkthrough of the app, check out our ForeFlight Fundamentals course at foreflight.com slash videos. And you can always find additional support resources at foreflight.com slash help.